right, sir. Hey, what's going on, man? It's a little bit after 12 o'clock, almost 1 o'clock. And we just decided to do a quick pop-up show, man. Uh, if y'all can see the background back there behind us, man, we're going to talk about that Raheem Morris meeting right quick. And if yes, y'all yes. haven't seen it, man, please stay tuned in because I'm going to play that entire six-minute clip. Uh, we're going to pause it and break it down as we go, man. But uh, before we get into this thing, man, there was a big trade today, man, Houston, Texans. The Buffalo Bills made a trade, man. Stephon Diaz goes from Buffalo to Houston. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling y'all, bro, right off the top, that could mean they gonna make they may be an instant Super Bowl contender. Yeah, I said it with a second year coach. Uh D'Amico Ryan had those guys playing tough last year. And you look at what they've done this offseason, man. And I'm gonna break it down right quick before I give y'all the trade. Um they have added a lot of pieces, man. You yeah. go out and get a Danielle Hunter, man, a mm -hmm. guy that wreck havoc last year man in the nfl up in minnesota then you go out and get a whew, man 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 i'm gonna break it down right quick stefan Diggs, daniel yeah. Hunter, joe mixon denico yeah. archery jeff o'connor oh, cj henderson tim settle foley fatukasi and partner tommy townsend so they've upgraded <laughs> the hell of this roster go, man in, uh, dog it's, it's crazy it. it's crazy it, you get what you're getting is this this prime time receiver as well man this guy right here is a number one on just about anybody's team Easy. you know you know a guy that's gotten over 1100 yards in all four of his seasons in buffalo and you add in this guy with tank dale and nico nico collins you basically uh took robert woods and got a major upgrade <laughs> I'm right. like, seriously, and you're going to have these three guys that's going to compliment well. The best thing I like about Stephon Diggs is his route running, his route tree is his route tree is crazy. And honestly, I believe that's one of the reasons why another receiver like a Justin Jefferson is as good as he is, because he did learn some from Stephon Diggs. Yeah. So the Houston Texans, man, they all those names you just ran down, they made moves and I commend them. I commend them for making moves. D'Amico Ryans, he's going to have so much fun with this team. And, hey, instant Super Bowl contenders, definitely. Right. A AFC Championship game, at least. That's that's what I'm and, looking and, at. And I'm going to take it to the next level with Stephon Diggs. You look at his stats over the years, man. This dude has almost 10,000. He's five yards from 10,000. Yep. And he should have already been there, but whatever, whatever. And think about what they have. You talk about a Joe Mixon, who's a dual threat running back. Um, you look at uh Damian Pierce, who's the bruiser mm -hmm. running back. He took a step Dalton back, there show. Too, but I think he's still down back. there too. Um, you look at uh Nico Collins, he had more mm -hmm. yards than Stefan Diggs last year. You look at Tank Dale, who missed the last couple of games with injury, a vertical threat. Dude, he's what five nine, five ten. Dude runs like a four four or four three. And Hi, he's bro. not afraid to run across that middle. You know, he so he's a slim guy. He's not afraid. Top it off. To top it off, you still have Dalton Schultz. No, that's not a yeah, big name. Schultz. But he's one of the best red zone threat tight ends in the NFL next to Travis Kelsey. And I expect Kyle Pitts to be in that conversation this year. But that's another yeah. story for another day. But uh, the Stefan Diaz trade, man, is pretty much ah, a steal. Um, and as I said, man, the Bills get a 2025 second-round pick. Uh, via Minnesota, which uh, Texans got about a week ago in a trade with the Vikings, with the Vikings moving up to the number 23 spot. So basically, you giving him, you giving them a second round receiver, and there's not going to be a receiver that's a Stephon Diggs in the second round. I know mm -hmm. it's deep, but you get a certified skill set at 30 years old. I'm taking that all day. Uh, you look at the Texans, they even got, after Stephon Diggs, they even got two picks back 
and that mm-hmm. is a steal. They uh, did. They get a six round pick this year mm-hmm. and a fifth round pick in 2025. So yep, yep. if you if you think about it, man, this is a steal for both for uh the Houston Texans because they basically give away nothing. And in Buffalo, they're blowing up that team and they, right. they may be shot to shit soon. Who knows? Uh but our receiver room in Buffalo now is Khalil Shakur, Curtis Samuel, Mac Hollins. Hey, I know a guy named Mac Hollins. And, I uh, think KJ, I him. Yeah, I remember <laughs> Mac Hollins. That's uh, KJ Hamler and Justin Shorter. Right. And they lost Gabe Davis and Stefan Diaz. They top two receivers. Good luck, Buffalo. Good luck, my guy. It happens. It happens. But uh yeah. hey man, look. Enough what we were told in the day, man, we're going to give y'all a, our quick thoughts on this meeting yesterday uh, with Raheem Morris, first meeting, putting his plan in place. And I actually watched it two or three times already. It was pretty good, man. And, uh, hey, man, he wanted me to get up and jump out my seat and motivated me. Man, I'm trying to tell you. Because, uh, man, when you have a coach that's transparent, open-minded, loves to listen to his players, uh and recognize give players recognition where it's deserved um i mean that's the recipe for success but man we're gonna get into this thing and man look when y'all hear this trust me y'all gonna love it man so it's captivating we're gonna, we're gonna get this thing rolling man infinitely let's start off captivating. go ahead now i'm just saying infinitely captivating this thing this thing is some good stuff let's get it man let's get it let's go morning falcon fans morning, Morning, man. Morning. Man, welcome, man. Welcome, man. It's good to see a couple old faces, a couple new faces. Good to see the people, man. Go ahead and get sit down, man. Sit down somewhere if y'all got some places to sit. Uh, welcome to the first day of the off-season program, man. I just want to let you guys know we're going to start this phase one thing out, man, but I want to give you a little couple staff intros. We got a little Jimmy Lake, our defensive coordinator. Come on down, Jimmy. We got Zach Robinson, our offensive coordinator. And we have Marquise Williams returning as our special teams coordinator. Young Keese. So the next thing, man, let's talk about this, man. I- let's start right there. Mm-hmm. Introduces head coaches. Very first thing you should always do. Exactly. Recognize the people that's going to help you. And that's the smart thing to do. Uh, mm-hmm. Like you said, Marquise Williams comes back as the special teams coordinator. You add Zach Robinson, um, Jimmy Lake, new defensive coordinator. I think, you know, this is the most important part that he's going to build a relationship with those guys. So you have to... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did not acknowledge those guys first, and I absolutely agree with that. Tell me what you think right quick before I press that play button again. Hey, man, it's an importance, you know? It's an importance. It's a respect thing, too. Hey, I respect my coaches as men and as the people that's going to help put this team together. So, yes, I want everybody in this room to know who are the leaders in this room and who are you guys you can you know you can come to. So, definitely important, important indeed. Facts, facts. Uh, but before we get the thing, the video going, man, and keep going, I'm going to give a shout out to the chat right quick. Oh, um, I apologize. You know, I always do that before I start the show. But I was so hyped to get into this video, man. It, it mind blowing. But uh, John Higgins, my big bro, man, uh, said Smooth Smith and Company. Anyone, anyone with you morning and what's happening? Oh, yeah, man, I'm here. I'm here. Everything good, man. Me and Tip riding this thing out, man. King ATL supporter, what's good, my dude? Fogo the, the Great. Oh, What's good? I'm excited myself, brother. Uh, my road dog, a- ATLGA Faithful, man. Y'all please go check him out on YouTube, man, uh, doing his thing. He's going to catch up with me sooner or later. Y'all going to see him on the show soon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nephew Jay Knight, man, stopping hey, through. Boy. Salute, man. Salute. My boy, Mac Town Dirty, stopping through as always. MW, the franchise player. Shout out to you, my brother. Yes, Military sir. service, so y'all salute him, man. Show him some love. Jamal D, what's good, man? My boy Marlon Cozy, uh, Marlon. Jamal D checking in. Kevin O'Connor, my boy Adam Holloway Depsky on Twitter, hey. man. Always putting out great Twitter content, man. Breaks down Falcon content like no other. So y'all please Thanks. go follow him on Twitter. Always doing his thing. My boy Ron Thomas stopping through. Uh, I agree, Ron, man. Uh, they playing Madden over there in Houston. Man, what? <laughs> Marlon, I agree. He finna go bananas. Hey, I agree, too. My boy Dave stopping through. You can do this when you have a quarterback on his rookie contract. I like this for the Bills. That's an excellent point, Dave. 
Um, yeah. Look, when you have everything in place and you own a rookie contract, that is absolutely correct. Top of the line is what sixty million from Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Oof, man, that is a big drop off. Tell and the way know. he played last year, he even gives half the effort this year that he had last year. I'm talking about CJ Stroud. Y'all yeah. better watch out, man. You're talking about a, a guy that passed for over 4,000 yards as a rookie. 23 touchdowns, five interceptions, great numbers. So, uh, Dave, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, because look where they was at last year. And come on now, they got better. Let's just be honest. They've gotten better. Serious contenders. Seriously got to um, take them in consideration as far as the AFC goes. Serious contenders. It's definitely the Chiefs. The Chiefs are there every year. We can um, possibly say whatever. I mean, the Chargers depend on what they do, but we know the Ravens, Chiefs, going to be there. We know possibly the Bills. We'll see what happens, what they do, especially in the draft. But the the Texans are there. They're are, they're like they're right there on paper. They're right they're there. there. Yep. Elias uh, Wallander. Uh, what's up, Smitty? Greeting from Germany. What's up, man? Germany. Thank you for tuning in. We going international around here. Oh uh, yeah, we, we we fool with y'all in Germany anyway. Elias said, I also thought about the same second round for Diggs plus a late, two late round picks in return. It's like they pay a fourth round for him, and that's nothing for Diggs. And I definitely agree with that. Our boy Sean, let's get a GA, man. Y'all people oh. check him out on YouTube, man. Let's get a GA gaming, man. He does his thing. Says the Texans are legit contenders in the AFC with this move. I think they're legit Super Bowl contenders. I'm going to take it to that next level. Uh, when oh, you have shit. everything in place, uh, you tell a young coach, uh, Bobby Slovic, who's a young offensive coordinator. Um, mm-hmm. Look. Who stayed, by the way, decided to stay. Stay, right, because he could have got a head coaching job. So that shows his dedication. Our boy Zay in the bag, he's up there in Baltimore, man. Y'all please go check him out. Zay in the hey. bag on YouTube as well. Uh, he's over a 1,000 subs now, man. He's doing his thing, so hey. y'all keep helping him grow. So they're going to try to get T. Higgins or Justin Jefferson. Hey. Hmm. Hey, it's a possibility, man. And I see the Falcons you the one that got Justin Jefferson after they got Kirk Cousins. I said, here, let's go, let's go all in. Let's do it. I wouldn't mind. Buffalo had to pay Allen. That ain't cheap. Definitely agree, Kevin. Definitely agree. Rogers, what's up, man? Uh Tony Wright, our boy Tony Wright coming through. Said, fella, from what I saw, the Falcons voluntary workout looked like it was 98% participation by the players. And that's what you want, man. Coming in, y'all, y'all see. Man, where's Tidy when I need him? I need that bell. Man, look, <laughs> Grady Jerry, bro. Grady Jerry put that picture up yesterday, man. I thought he was, bro. Um, I hey, thought he man. was training for Mr. Olympia. No, nah, Grady, Grady been working, man. Grady been he working. Working. That's what you want to see, because you know it's some doubts. So I, I love that he did that. Love that he did yes. that. Retro G. Retro G, what's up, man? Miss Lisa Shepard, thank you for tuning in. Hey, Miss Lisa. Skinback.com. What's mm-hmm. good? Southside Ricky. What's good? My yeah. boy Twan checking in. Say, oh, let's yeah. go find him. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Lisa said the Texans gonna be a problem. Definitely agree with yeah. that. Yeah, man. Strong Island Smitty. Hey, I got all kind of names now. So hey. I'm trying to tell you, but in my phone, he's Smitty 10K. So it is what Tony it is. Wright says Cincinnati will be in the AFC mix. They're definitely. Uh, uh-huh. They added those big giant uh, tackles to protect Joe Burrow. Um, they're going to add more talent in the draft. So trust me, yeah, they're going to still be in it. Because Joe Burrow, to me, is the Martin Day Joe Montana. Don't care what y'all say or how y'all feel about it. That dude, if the Falcons had a Joe Burrow Super Bowl, I'm telling you. And there's no doubt about it. Because look mm-hmm. what he made it to the Super Bowl with a couple of years ago. Yeah, facts. And I like Joe Burrow, man. I, I think Joe Burrow was always going to be the one to kind of go at Pat Mahomes. Like, seriously, I know everybody was kind of like force feeding Josh Allen. And Josh Allen's a great quarterback, but I always was seeing Joe Burrow, man. It's just – yeah, he got a different – when he's healthy and upright, he got a different moxie about him. Oh, yeah, man. That's why I say he reminds me of Joe Montana. Yeah, I grew up in that area. I watched Joe Montana dismantle the Falcons every single year. And it was ugly. Trust me, it was ugly. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, I don't know, uh, nephew Jaden. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen with T Higgins. I think he gets traded. He won uh, out, but 
I think it. I think it'll be draft night. Depending on what they can get draft night, because the closer we get to the draft, I think uh, the draft compensation will lower just a little bit. But he's making what twenty one million dollars this year. That's no chump change. So uh, whoever can pay that twenty one million dollars, that's who probably get him. But I would love to see him go to Cincinnati and play with his old college teammates, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. That would be uh, some. No, I'm sorry, uh, not Joe Burrow, not Cincinnati. Uh, T Higgins. I uh, apologize for that. Had a brain fart. Uh, but I would love to hear him go to a high powered team. I can see him in Arizona. Trade him to Arizona. They need a receiver. Get, they have two first round picks. Hey, they may get Marvin Harrison at number four and number 27, I think they are. Yeah. They can trade out of that pick. Right. Huh. That's interesting there, Smith. I like that. I ain't going to hey. lie, I do, because they need two. I- they, they need a whole the team down there in Arizona. And I know Why that sounds funny know? coming from a team that lost to Arizona, but they need everything in Arizona. Like, seriously, yeah. it's not just rod receivers. They need defense. They need offense. They need special teams. Hell, they need coaching. But- Miss Leeson, yeah, we was in the NFC West. 49 used to destroy us every year. But uh, let's get back into this video, man. Uh, he introduced yeah. the coaches, like I said. I love that part. But uh, let's finish listening to what he has to say. Yeah, I want to be world class in everything we do, and not just I. I'm talking about Terry. I'm talking about all hands on deck with all our coaches. I'm talking about Ryan. I'm talking about Kyle Smith. I'm talking about everybody across the board. This building, Arthur Blink. I want to be world class in everything we do, and I'm right there. Talks about chemistry. Chemistry is important in anything you do. When you have everybody on the same page, that's a recipe for a championship team. And what I mean by that. The offensive coordinator is going to jail with his offense and defensive coordinator is going to be on the same page and Indeed. with his defense. If you're going to trust your coaches, chemistry is the best way to do that. So when he talk about everybody being on the same page from Arthur Blank all the way down to uh, Kirk Cousins, the quarterback, that's chemistry. You have to. Ooh, man, I'm telling y'all, boy, I want to jump up when he was talking. Man, world I'm, class. I want to be world class. Man, tell me what you think about right that right there. Huh? Yeah, man, we're being just being world class. That's just talking about in work ethic, talking about in the studies, talking about the film room, the training room, everything world class, tip top, creme de la creme. And I'm with it, man. Like, like you said, man, it made me just want to. I was, I, I just wanted to go put some pads on. I felt like I needed to work out. I feel like I needed to do something, you know, just because it's just like it's infectious energy, man. I'm trying to tell you, when you have that, great things can happen. Great facts. Facts. Let's keep it rolling. Really going to put a wholehearted effort to doing that, right? We're going to we're going to identify some problems and we're going to attack them. We got a whole lot of things you're going to see around this building that's being changed. But I want to have a world class environment. And what does that mean, man? Let's talk about the plan. Let's talk about the plan. It's going to be a team. Before he gets into the plan, one thing he just talked about was accountability. That is mm-hmm. that one thing that I think Arthur Smith failed at, and that was oh, his yeah. downfall. Not only holding his players accountable, but holding himself accountable. Um, he messed up when he did not have a quarterback coach. I think that was a mistake in itself. So yeah, what do the Falcons do? They go out and get, what, about 14, 15 coaches that can coach a quarterback, that can coach in the offense and make this offense gel like it's supposed to. And with the weapon that they have already, um, that gel like he talked to the first part, and then accountability, uh, oof. trust me. He got everything ready. Let's keep it going. In a family mm-hmm. environment, a team in a family environment. Man, I want all of you guys to be able to talk to me, communicate at a high level. Man, it's already started. I've got communication from Kirk Cousins. I got communication with Jesse Bates and what he's doing, when he's doing it. B. John Robinson, what's going on? What's happening in his life? All the people that we're talking about, everybody's important. Everybody. Talk about, then I just say something about chemistry. Mm-hmm. He just keeps talking about it. And one thing that, that hammering in the point, right? And what I love about what he just said, he didn't come out and say it, but he transparency is key. And as I told y'all, when he had that very, very first uh introductory press conference, he talked about being transparent. And when you're transparent, that's how people players buy into your philosophy because mm-hmm. they can see exactly what you're trying to sell. So when you see that, uh, transparency is going to be key. One thing that I told y'all that he was great at doing, and he talked about this just now in so many words, learning how to listen to each other. 
Mm-hmm. You listen to each other. That's how you end up on the same page. So, look, man, when he talked about he keeping tabs on everybody, mm-hmm. that's exactly what he's supposed to do. Right. Not hold, that's how you hold people hold accountable. Everybody you accountable. Know, right. When you know exactly what they're doing, when they're going to be this place, when they're going to be not. I know some of y'all are saying, but I'm not their daddy. But when you have right. a job this prominent and have a chance to be successful in this league, you have to be their daddy, even though you don't want to. So yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, and, and with the whole and with that whole thing term too, as far as like being their daddy, it's not necessarily you being their dad. You're being just accountable amongst men. You're being a leader amongst men. And you know, that's what you have to do. Cause just like you said, he's the head coach. So regardless of what happens, whatever whatever that goes right or goes wrong, it starts with him and, and his staff. So and, ju- and just like not, I just said, if he don't hold them accountable, dad. if yeah. he don't hold them accountable, Arthur Blank is gonna hold him accountable. So you feel me? So you got to keep that under control, man. Let's just keep it real. But go ahead, my bad. Oh no, I'll never shoot, man. That's pretty much what I'm saying, though. Man, it's just he's not being a dad; he's being a a coach who's got to be a leader amongst men, lead these guys to a goal that they're all trying to get to, which is a world championship. And I like right. the fact how he's calling out names and letting people know that, hey, I know who you are. I know who you are. Yeah. And he's, he, man, it's infectious, man. And it makes people feel important. That's what you're supposed to do. Right. He, and he when people make you feel that way, you're going to run through a brick roll for him. Just keep it Bro, right. that's what I'm saying. You'll do anything for him. You do anything for him. You just think about that one person, or if you have them that that you know you'll do anything for because of how they carry themselves and their character. It, it's the same thing, man. You, you want to play for this guy. I want to play for this guy. <laughs> it's like if you're not on board by now, it's like I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what else the man got to do. <laughs> man, look, uh, Milan, I definitely agree with that. Without an NFL level quarterback. Coach really was doomed from the start. Definitely agree right. with that, man. You definitely have to have somebody to coach and teach these guys. And I know sometimes I always say uh, some players learn better from other players because they know exactly what they're going through, mm-hmm. but you still got to have the proper coaches in place. That's why I said, that's why I said earlier, he's got 14, 15 guys in place that can work with the quarterback. And he even has a quarterback uh, coach on the roster. That was the wide receiver coach last year, which made absolutely there no sense go. to me. No sense. <laughs> <laughs> and we just got Dave for going out there just getting door dashed for everybody. Facts. Let's go back a little bit. Let's let's get it. Everybody's important. Everybody's important. I don't care what you play, what you do for this organization. I want you to have that type of environment, that type of feeling with us. Right? The next thing we just talked about it. I want a world-class football education. And that's going to come from these coaches. Right. These coaches we brought in, I got a lot of respect for and I believe in them as far as everything we're talking about from the education and standpoint and all the stuff that you guys want in order for us to be the best that we could possibly be every single day. Right. Here's the other plan. The personal development. Right. Personal. De- That's key. Please listen to what he's about to say, because we just talked about development with Diaz mm-hmm. without the proper development pieces around. him. Listen to this. This is very, very intelligent. Development. What does that mean, man? Mental health is real, right? And we're going to attack this full blown and full out. If you need help, we're going to find ways to get it for you. We brought Lovey a part of this program. We brought Nando a part of this program and we'll get everything we need. Whether it's just me talking to you or somebody talking to you from a professional level, we'll have all those things in place and we'll get them in detail in our buildings when we need them, why we need them, whatever the case may be. That's just what it is. And at the end- Mental health, that's one of the keys. And um, if you think about it, think about this, what I saw on the field last year with Desmond Riddle and Arthur Smith. How many times did Arthur Smith not get the plays in on time? How many times um, did he not call the proper play at the proper time? Mm-hmm. This goes all the way back to what I said a couple of months How many times ago. you just look and he just not interacting with. And it, it, it's film room, man. Basically, what he's talking about is the film room. So when you are in the film room, this is going to be key. Communication is key. And this is exactly what he is talking about. Uh, Delilah HD, I agree with that, man. Calvin Ridley comes to mind. Had a, men, had a mental, uh, mental 
uh, in this episode. So yeah. when you talk about what he endured and end up quitting on the team, this is what Raheem Morris is trying to prevent. He wants everybody in communication. He wants everybody to jail. This is why he has so much personnel in place for nobody not to be on the same page. Whether Indeed. it's on the field, the practice field, the film room, he wants everything to flow smoothly. And shout out to the front office for allowing him to be able to bring in those people as needed. You know, so everybody's got to be on the same page. So, you know, I also got to give a shout out to them for allowing him to be able to bring in these many coaches so we can build this chemistry amongst these these men to be pretty much one band, one sound. That's what right. I'm hearing, the old drum line. So, hey, right. I'm with it, man. Let's keep it rolling. Into this thing, man, wouldn't be community contributors, right? There is no better example than Grady in the back of the room and what he's done for the city of Atlanta. Grady came out, turned into the superstar, and now he's all over the community. The boy got commercials. His mama got commercials. It is what it is, man, right? We're going to be a part of this community, man. It's real, right? That's who we got to be. That's who I want us to be. That's what I'm embracing, right? We got mustard named after us right mustard now. Mustard named after right? us. Now, B. John, you got to sell that pistol to the marketing department to get you right, but that's on you, right? That's on you, right? But I want to be community contributors, and that's very important to me. We And that's right there. That lets you know. He's paying attention to the fans. Right. When you pay attention to what the fans need and what the community needs, and we know Arthur Blake, man, he, he's all about community. Uh, you talk about Arthur Blake donating money, uh, building mm -hmm. facilities, uh, you know, just interacting with the city, and that's exactly uh, what the Falcons, that's what they do. That's what they need to keep doing, and this is what he means by the players connecting with their community, not only with each other, but with the community that they're in. You talk about the city of Atlanta, one of the uh, up-and-coming cities when you talk about metro cities. We know about Los Angeles. We know about New York. We know about Miami. But Atlanta, they are coming up just as fast. So uh, oh, you got to stay in touch with the community. Yeah, Tell me what you got right quick. Yeah, definitely got to stay in touch with the community, man. We we need to see you, you know. I mean, we see you on the football field, but we also need to see you in the community giving back because that's what, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? Climbing out of the rut and still giving back, not forgetting where you came from. So as a team, I love it. I love seeing it. I love what his message is, where he's going with this. I love the fact that he's paying attention to detail to what some of the players have going on as well. Like, is he talking about Bajan with his mustard? As he's talking about the things that Grady's doing, his, his mom's doing. The thing about it is he's paying attention to detail and showing that other people, hey, look, yeah, I know this about you. Yeah, I know this about you. Why? Because I'm paying attention to you. Why? Because I care. Isn't I'm your coach, but I'm also your friend. You know. Facts. So just, you know. But uh, four quarter really sportcast, man. Y'all go check them out on YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, man. I need a I need an extra large. Yeah, man. You can go ahead and get me a, a. I don't know. Get me a large, man. Just get me a large. I feel like I'm, I'm gonna end up filling it out in a little bit anyway. So yeah. Facts. Doctor, uh, this is one funny how the doctor slick this. Uh, <laughs> says, absolutely, man, when you're trying to send a message. One of the best the things on YouTube, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about what you put emphasis and important in. That definitely agree. And as I told y'all last year, man, we didn't never, to me, a team is always an image of their coach, uh, of what their coach brings. I didn't see any energy towards the team from Arthur Smith. I didn't see any sense of urgency. Uh, and this is, like I said, these are things that he's going to learn along the way. So if he does get another job, he'll know what not to do. Uh, so come on. Hey, man. Zay, Zay kept it too real right there. Hey, on everything, I played that thing for uh, the startup in my warm up before I worked out this morning. Boy, on everything, it's so funny. It just that's how it makes you feel. It's just the energy from it, the accountability in it, the communication skills, as Antonio just saying here, man, it's just. Bro, it's infectious. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm shout out, about, to, yes, shout yes, out Tony. Say, I do feel you, bro. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Tony, mm -hmm. say, uh, Coach Raheem has excellent, great communication skills. I definitely agree with that. And he's showing that. And he actually, you could actually see that when he was here the first time. Uh, mm -hmm. Because when he took over as intern coach, people wanted to run through a wall t for him then. And to be honest, um, a lot of players wanted him to return as head coach after uh, they moved on and went and got Arthur Smith. So now 
we've come full circle. Raheem has won a Super Bowl with the Rams. Now he can learn from that experience, bring it to his own situation, and know how to build a team, know how to communicate with them, know what it takes to win a championship. So now uh, in the draft and the rest of free agency period, he will try to bring in players that exemplify excellence, players that know how to communicate, team players, and guys that have an edge to themselves. And that's exactly what he's telling us in this video. But let's keep this thing rolling right quick. We are building a world class for you and you only and you, the players. That's the most important thing to us. But that's what's going on right now. So, you know. All right. Here it is, man. Another part of this thing. And let's start. Let's start working on our identity. Right. Identity. In East what? That, that's one of the most let's key words. In this video. On our identity. Lord have mercy. <laughs> what 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 was the Falcon identity up on the Arthur Smith? And this, and not trust me, I'm not taking shots yes. at Arthur Smith. I just want y'all to uh I just want y'all to uh know, man. Trust me. What was our identity on the Arthur Smith? Run the football. Run the football. Yep. So if you have an identity and team have the game plan for that identity, you have to know when to switch it up just a little bit. You have to know when to audible. You don't have to know when to switch it up, call different plays. Austin Smith did not do that well. We talk about uh, situational play calling. He did not mm -hmm. do that well. So it's just a lot that he had to learn, and this is what Raheem Morris is trying to teach us not to uh, fall into that same trap. Uh, Delilah, I definitely agree, collapsing in the red zone. You just got to stop that, man. And I think with Kirk Cudden, this is where – She's speaking um, too real right now. This is exactly <laughs> where uh, Kirk Cousins comes into play. We talk about 6'6 six, six tight end and Kyle Pitt, 6'4 wide receiver in Drake London, uh, mm -hmm. speed back in B. John Robinson. Um, so Rondell Moore has speed. Darnell Mooney has speed. Tyler, you had power. But, hey, you're going to mesh all that together. And this is exactly what he means about being competitive, man. But uh, let, let's roll it on right quick. These things like this, this, this comes about, and coaches say it, but it don't really come to life until you turn the tape on. Cool! Mm -hmm. Young way, right? It don't I come to life until you start working on this stuff and you start to do it yourself, right? But I want this to be a competitive, I want this to be about tough, and I want this to be about a physical football team. And let the results find out where they go. Let them land where they may. Right? You put this stuff on tape, let that land with me, man. It's starting that old line room. The next part of this thing, man, is the skill development and the teaching and the core of our coaching. Hey, man, we're going to get everything out of every single player in here. I don't give a f who you are. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out what you can do and how you can do it and see if it can work in the National Football League on our team or somebody else's. Like, there that is go. my goal for everybody in this room to collect a paycheck somewhere in the National Football League. It goes beyond the Atlanta Falcons to that, 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 that shield. Right. Stop so it right there, wait for me, bro. Football is only the now, that right there, we're going to make sure we get everything out of you. We're going to make sure that you can get, receive a paycheck in the NFL. Key part, whether it's with this team or not. I love the fact how it's like subliminal, like it's just saying, hey, everybody is not going to make it on this football team. And I let me let that be known from day one. I love it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he's not hiding anything. He's uh, turning over every stone. Like, hey, we're going to hey, see what, what you What do. did I say in the beginning? Transparency. Transparency. And keep showing I love it, it bro. That, so, that's what yeah. we – if we just had more of that in this world, it would be better. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Transparency, that's man. Accountability. Like, real accountability. It's just it's, – you just love to see it. And I love, love it for the logo, man. I love it for – our Falcon community, you know what I'm saying? Because this is, you know, so this is in the right direction. This is uh, steps in the right direction for this franchise, something that we need. This is on day one. And he's just being so transparent, letting the players know exactly what's going on and letting them know, hey, even if it's not on our team, I still want you to be out here to be able to make a check. So let's see what you can do. Let's get these That's skills. what I talked yeah. about earlier, being that father figure, man. That's, That's what man. he wants to be to these guys. And Leader. don't get me wrong, and trust me, he's still a young guy. He's only 47 years old. He'll be 48 later this year, um, and I'm, I'll am i be 45 in a couple of months. So, you know, still young guys. So for a guy this young 
to have this type of effect on guys that some guys that are just what 15 years younger than him that's mm-hmm. that's amazing man but uh let's keep this thing rolling man we got about a minute and a half left on this video beginning right that's my, just the beginning my right? part. you can't just worry about football man it's all of us invested in you guys and invested in who we are and how we're going to do it right it starts and ends with our relationships it does like we're building that right now with the coaches man we're talking about the coach what did i just say about Arthur smith about relationships his relationship <laughs> with his team was not good it and, was shown on the football field you know like i said the second half of the season the falcons defense was so tired um and they had to give up because they were tired and if right. you had that right relationship with your players man you would and the right uh communication you would know what tires them uh what they need what their strengths what their weaknesses are he's trying to learn this from day one and that's mm-hmm. that's through practice that's through film and that's through conversation so look man that, i love that part of the video mm-hmm. but uh you got anything to say before i get this last little part out oh sure man go ahead and get it out real quick like i said it's getting to my favorite part okay and how we want to do it man working together man all of us right all hands on deck we're working on our scout staff ask terry man we're getting together we're talking about the people we bring in how we going about our free agency plan how we going about our draft plan everybody's going to be a part of this thing it's constant communication it's collaboration it's all the words that you heard us talking about right this is the vision this is what we sold this is the plan as players now it's on you how close can we get in this room how close can we become how far the how much further can we go how much more of a leader can you be aj how much more vocal can you be how can we do it cool all together how do we form these relationships when we're in the weight room we're running with griff how do we do those things we got to make that look different right the difference in the nfl is the people sitting in these seats mm-hmm. you guys make the difference you guys change everything you guys determine winning nobody else not the outside world at all the people in these seats the people in, uh, sitting around this thing we provide the help. That's what we do. We provide the help. We support at the highest level. And if we not, call us out. Just like we'll call you out if you're not playing. The- Again, there go that word accountability. They he wants you to hold him accountable. If he if he's doing something that you don't agree with, tell him. If you feel like you can bring something to the table that can change things up to make this team successful, do it. That's what it's all about, man. That's what it's all about. Bro. Accountability. This is lovely, bro. Just re- even re-watching this is just making me just want to go get up and want to just go run through a wall, brother. It's just sitting here, sitting here is just, you know, it's just like, a, it's like I'm almost fidgeting. Like, bro, I, I got to do something. It's time to do something. It's time to work. It's time to grind. You know, it's time to grow. Like, this is, this is awesome, bro. This is always awesome. Man. Look. Man. Ooh, we got what uh 51 seconds left. we got a little bit uh, left let's go the right way that's what we're about right as a team right we got these team goals right jesse want to win a super bowl and you cannot win it today but you can certainly start working towards that you definitely can and this is what it's all for because i believe this in my whole heart of everything hustling right hustling it is the first thing that we have to do it has to be our foundation. We got to outrun the South. Mm-hmm. Right? Let's be real. We got to outrun the South. We win the South. We go to the playoffs. You get in the playoffs. You don't know what the you, know, you just don't. Anything. Right? Apart, Hustling right, precedes apart. everything. Is everybody with me? Yes, Break it up, man. Yes, sir. That's my part right there, baby. Win the South. You win the South. You get to the playoffs. You get to the playoffs, you don't know what it can happen. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what can happen. Man, look. Come man. on, man. How does that not fire you up? Ooh. How does that now, not man, make you want to go and, get and, up? And and think about what he started that off with. He started over the division. He did not jump straight to the Super Bowl. He know there's got to be a first step to everything. The first step is communication. Second step, teamwork. Third step, Hustling. Fourth step, that leads to the division title. You win a division title depending on how many games you win, 
You win the first game and you advance to the division round. You win another game and advance to the championship. Hey, you never know what could happen. And with the weapons that they put on this team and that they already have, they can hang with anybody. All Kirk Cousins has to do is execute, like he said, execution, film study, all that good stuff. So, uh, man, look. Hey, man. If that didn't fire y'all up, I don't know what will. I really don't. And it's just like just like he said. I mean, I'm giving you the tools. I'm giving you the plan right here. This is the plan. But what he say? It's on the players. It's on the players. It's on the men that he was talking to. It's time for them to get some action about themselves. It's time for them to get out there and get after it now. I'm ready to get out there and get after it, and I ain't got a contract. <laughs> so, But, again, if accountability. It's on the players. If you don't perform – that's on you. You just won't be on the team because that's all we're about now. We're about action. Win now. Let's get it. Let's do it. No more excuses. No more BS. Let's get We got a window and we got to hit it. That's what I'm talking I mean, about, man. Cut and dry for me. Blake Stitt said, uh, actually, yeah, we'll Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and again, on the players. It's time for them to bring that action. It's time for them to be about that action. This conference really? made me even more thankful we didn't get Belichick. Uh, great coach, but not great for the direction of the Falcons are going in. I agree with that to a certain extent. Shout out to Larry from the Dixon Way, man. Thank you for smashing right. that like button. And, man, if y'all haven't yet, please go to 95 North Falcons Talk Show, A1 Forever, and Smitty Sports Machine. Hit that subscribe button for these channels. Hit those like buttons. Check out some of the videos. Uh, we've been trying to put out content all off season. And we're just going to keep doing it up until draft and after the draft. Because uh, trust me, we're a long way from done. So, uh, y'all yeah. yeah, can please uh, go check out those channels. Tony Wright says, one word, some of Raheem Morris' speaking style. Powerful. Oh. Best way to put it. Best way to put it. And like I said, when your players are to buy into you, you got to speak something to, into existence. And he's showing them how to speak things into existence, how to achieve goals. Um, and point blank, how to be a team. Because if your coach doesn't teach you how to be a team and you, you out there doing your solo thing, how are you going to win? Because they know I ain't team. We know that. So that's a great point. Uh, powerful. Definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. and, I'm going to be a CPA to form myself. Play sports. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Go yeah. I'm a CP too. Now, I was just saying, for people who used to play sports, I know it kind of like, like for me, I used to play sports. And I'm pretty sure it's others in the chat that used to play sports. And I know it kind of hits you differently, too, because it's like, man, I know what they, I know what those guys are feeling like right now. I know what those guys are going through right now. Like that right there makes you want to get up and go ahead and be the best that you can be. So you can achieve that Super Bowl ring. Like he was saying, Jesse, Jesse, you want a Super Bowl ring, right? Can we can we can you be more vocal, AJ? You know, it just, he calling out guys accountability, man, calling out the leaders of the team young way. You know, because all that, man. It's just. He's watched yeah. film from last year. And yeah. that just lets me know he's trying to learn each and every player that he can. Um, if he's, he, he mainly spoke to the, the veterans and the leader of this team. Grady's a leader. AJ's a leader. Um, Kirk is probably going to be a leader coming in at quarterback. Chris Lindstrom. Uh, mm -hmm. We talk about it. those are the guys he's going to hold most accountable. Guys that have been here for a while that's tied to the city. So, as he should, as he should. But uh, Ron's legacy nine nineteen fourteen. Uh, I think in free agency, I think we're done. Uh, we will probably draft the wide receiver and draft maybe two. Uh, but y'all got to remember, Terry Fontenot loves to go to the CFL. Terry Fontenot loves to uh, get guys on day three and eight for some reason. They always find undrafted gems. They do that very well. So scouts, man, you know Terry used to be that. Uh, Tony Wright says, people forgot that this man has vast amounts of head coaching experience. He learned early with Tampa at 32 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, four dudes in Atlanta and Los Angeles as an assistant, and now is his time. And that is what you're supposed to do. Learn from your mistakes. As you grow, uh, your thinking and your experience grows. Um, the way you push yourself, it changes. Uh, mm -hmm. So the way he's pushed himself since he left Atlanta five years ago, in those five years, he's going to put that tie that experience into what he learned from 30, 
early 30s of being a head coach all the way up to now. Right. And he said that in the press conference. Uh, but I'm going to give you all a couple of minutes to come in and talk to us, man. Um, we've been on 45 minutes. We can go a little longer. So I'm going to drop the link in the chat. Give us your notes. And tell us what y'all think about that press conference, man. Y'all made some great comments in the chat. But come in and talk to us right quick. Yeah, buddy. There we go. And shout out uh, to the chat. James always just coming Campbell through. and Bud come back. Uh, if it's going to be one of those guys, I think it'll be Bud. Uh, to mm -hmm. be honest, I don't think Campbell comes back. And I, and I think they know that you can tell by the moves that we made. Um, I don't think Campbell comes back, but Bud still have a great chance because I think uh, they can actually uh, still afford to pay Bud because I don't think he'll be that much. Uh, Antonio, man, thank you for the super chat, man. Truly appreciate it. Sure. I guarantee your mood in that locker room has our boys believing in Coach Raheem's philosophy, and they are going to be so fired up come game day, and I definitely agree with that, and that's what I'm saying. It's about okay. connecting with your players, building that that's chemistry, and uh, look, man, if they do that, hey, man, it's going to be lights out. Uh, Tony Rice says, Phil, I do believe that we have a good have to get D'Angelo Malone going. I saw him in college at Western Kentucky, and this dude can get after the quarterback. He has a high motor and remember the senior bowl. I definitely agree with that. But I, I think what he, I think the reason he fell off, and I'm gonna be honest with y'all, man. Um, I just don't think he fit with um Ryan, Ryan Nielsen, Nielsen like Nielsen. Nielsen. right, yeah, because he liked yeah. the bigger defensive ends. And now that we're back in a full three four, I think D'Angelo Malone may uh prosper off this because I saw him at Western Kentucky as well. You talk about a guy that was fast, uh mm -hmm. physical, um, can chase after the quarterback, great pursuit angles, uh, and not to being able to fit in uh, a defense when you get to the next level, that's the most frustrating thing of all. Mm -hmm. And that's why it seems like he never caught on because he just was not. Ryan Nielsen, prototypical size. He was Dean uh, Pease. Yeah. Go ahead. Was, you know what I'm saying? He was drafted for Dean Pease. Right. And, and, you know, we was thinking that he was going to be around a little longer. And when we switched it up, things probably switched for Malone. And Malone, he's one of the best athletes on the defense, uh, uh, sneak, sneak wise, you know, slick. He really is. And you can unleash him possibly, hopefully, in this 3 4. I'm hoping. That this will be the year we start hearing Malone with the sack, you know, right. Abacati with the sack. And, you know, I want to those two guys so much, bro. Uh, a couple of the games that they played those fast quarterbacks, they kept getting killed on the outside. I kept saying, why is the yeah, Malone. Malone not on the field? You have to match speed with speed sometimes. And Josh Dubs, Kyler Murray, they just killed us on the outside. Yeah. So, and you had Khalil Campbell trying to set the edge. And y'all know he's not that fast of a guy at 36 years old. Come on. Malone, now you should have had Malone right there. He would have been stopping them or at least uh making them uh sit in the edge so they have to cut back in. You know, come on, bro. It's just yep. what's up, nephew? What's up, up? You got it. Man, I'm ready, man. I'm ready. What you think? What you think about that uh that meeting? Man, I'm ready, ready, ready to take my ass back to the damn field. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of what what kind of effect do you expect him to have in his first season as coach in the Falcons? Uh, man, I'm I'm thinking like that Demetro Ryan's type energy, mm. like the Mike Tomlin energy, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready, man. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah man. Um, I agree with that. As um, long as it translates, it just I just hope it translates. That's all we needed to do. Because last year when Art was here, man, you didn't really, you didn't really feel nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's you what I'm saying. You see stuff like that. You hey. have never seen anything like that. Team no. is a reflection of you, man. It always has been. If you if you go if you're going to show us um, no sense of urgency, no enthusiasm, right? Um, what what are, what are we supposed to expect? Exactly. And it it translated to the field. By the time we was in game ten, game eleven, the enthusiasm started to show. Um, they didn't want to play for him no more after a certain time because that last game in yep. New Orleans, mm -hmm. y'all look at how they played the first half. They went and put it all out on the field. But yep. since he didn't show a sense of urgency, uh, didn't have, you know, the wherewithal uh, to pump this team up, they said, man, here, we quit. 
Cause when I when I saw them walk out to the locker room in that New Orleans yep. game, they just said, "Man, the hell with it," and it showed the second half because they got ran out the building. So, come on. My thing is, why the hell would you? What's the point of being a coach if you're not going to have yourself accountable? I mean, some people, like I say, uh, nephew, all the time, man. People who can't hold themselves accountable. Um, it just says a lot about them, man. It says a lot about their ego. It says a lot about their personality. And, yep. um, and, and when you'll I see it in some of them press conferences with old RD too. Yeah, and, and what and what I what I always tell y'all, uh, he got that rich kid syndrome. Oh, mm-hmm. I can do this. Oh, I can do that. I don't really have to do this. No. Hey, I man, do. y'all think upbringing ain't don't matter? It do. Oh, I can do this. I'll tell y'all the difference though. Hey, man, y'all think hey, turn your TV, turn your TV down, nephew. All right, yeah. Yeah. I get myself in the background. Uh, I was looking around like Smitty. Where you at? What? <laughs> Larry, what's up, man? Laura, what's going on, y'all? What's going on? What's up? What's hey, up, man? How you feeling? Uh, man, I'm I'm feeling good. Feel like I'm gonna run through a wall for um Coach hey, Rock. Yeah, Coach mm-hmm. Rock there uh, giving some good speeches, man. Yeah. And we love to hear that. Uh. And he's saying, hey, you guys are going to be the reason why we win. We're right. here to support mm-hmm. you, give you, and put you in the right position to win. That's what coaches are supposed to do. They support their players to put them in the best position to win. Yep. It's up to you guys, you know what I'm saying, to make it happen. Also, holding them guys accountable for getting themselves better, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Personal right. growth and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? We can point you in the direction, but you you don't want to get out there in the offseason. You got to lift that last weight. You got to get out there and run that last rep. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll give you the blueprint, right? but you got to execute. Back. You feel me? So I like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, we all, we seem like, just like Smitty was just saying, it seemed like it was a disconnect between the coaching staff and the players last season. Yep. And, and yeah, I agree. After that New Orleans game, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, all right, man. Yeah, yeah man. Going what? back and forth between they... Ritter and Taylor Heineke, it was just like there was no strong leader in that um in that coaching staff, you know what I'm saying? And it showed. You know, so uh hopefully Coach Ra, uh we can weed out some of those bad habits that was collected over the past three years with Arthur Smith. And uh Hey, I'm glad he owned it. He still owned it. Hey, we got to win this division. That's it. Plain and simple. I do. Yeah, so. Yeah, we got to win the division. I said that's my favorite part at the end. Yeah, you win, that, you win, win the, the South. Division. Win the yeah, South. Make the playoffs. playoffs. Yep. You get the playoffs. You don't know what the fuck can happen. Boom. Boom. Got you, so man. So eloquently repeated um, by you, Chris. <laughs> oh yeah man i'm just you just don't bro and I, I love that part that part just resonated with me so much just because it's so true if you believe in yourself and your ability and you know so of course you know you got to have uh health and luck in there a little bit too but you create yeah. your own luck yeah. That's what I'm you can create your own luck yeah. with your work ethic but getting in that weight room getting in that film room like he said world-class education world-class yeah. work ethic that's how you create your own luck uh-huh. Yeah, I feel like luck is when opportunity meets preparedness. You know what I'm saying? That's when you create your own luck. You don't just get lucky because, hey, we got, um, hey, we're scared we're in the NFL and something's just going to magically happen. No, mm-hmm. you, you get to a point and, you know what I'm saying, you seize the opportunity. You you make your own luck, basically. Yeah. And, and one thing that uh, I took away from Arthur Smith as well last year, this is the reason why his situation of play calling was awful. Yes. Uh, it shows lack, you know, no sense of urgency, lack of communication in the film room. Uh, because if you don't have a quarterback coach nine times out of ten, that tells me you're working with the quarterback yourself. And if you're not in the film room teaching Ritter how to get better, teaching Heineke new ways to approach playing the quarterback position, Mm-hmm. How can you succeed with that? And not it shows that you and it not shows inconsistent play. If you're consistent in the film room, if you're consistent in practice, 
Um, you should that consistency in those two areas should yield you playing better on the field, but it was totally the opposite of that. Exactly. So not yeah. growing. And, and the that's why our teams never got past seven and ten because that was your ceiling because you were stagnant. You had no growth in right. your coaching and your philosophy and your communication with the players. You, we see it all the time, guys. We have eyes. We're all we're all we all watch the game. Yeah. Yeah. We all see the lack of interaction with our players. And because of that, that's another reason why our ceiling was seven and ten for three straight seasons. Straight oh, seasons. Say that again, Chris. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just like three straight seasons. That's our high ceiling, seven and ten, because of your lack of development as a coach and a person. Man, I just got one question. How you how you a head coach and officer coordinator at the same damn time? Like, what sense does that make? I mean, some some coaches can pull that off, that, but that not not him. But, <laughs> but, but this is why. He didn't, <laughs> <laughs> but I told you that's why he didn't pull it off because nope. no sense of urgency, no communication nope. with his players, and the way that he carried himself on the sidelines. That's the way the team played on the field. So what the um, hell? Was, what the hell was DoorDash doing the whole time? What was that? You you just said it, DoorDash. He was just DoorDash. ordering food. I think I tried to get something too. I promise you. I was like on the side, and I was like, "Hey, hey well, I can't get nothing. I'm no. getting everybody else something." <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that they were gone. I definitely agree with that. That was the greatest job security, right? Yeah, he went to the Rams. I heard too. Great job yeah. security. No it's blame. Totally he got another like job. Yep. Also, awesome. hey, Will, before I let you in, man, turn down uh, the radio. You there, Will? Oh, what's up? What's up, man? What's up, fellas? What's going on? What, what you, you got going on, man? <laughs> oh, no, no, man. I was, I like the press conference what they were saying about, you know, holding everybody accountable and uh, make the team communicate better. I feel like Raheem Morris got us in the, in the win she's wasting now mode, so. That's all I got to say, man. We 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 won in this division. We're going to some playoffs. He'll you know, he'll better head coach than Arthur Smith. Let's take it that. That's, that's, yeah. All right, yeah. fellow, I'm out. That's all I had to say. Okay, hey, man. Be safe right, out there, boy. Hit them windshield yeah. wipers going. Yeah, everybody in Atlanta area and, and surrounding areas, man. Y'all, please be safe out there. Yes. Because yeah, yeah. Uh, man, these roads crazy. Uh, trees are falling in certain places. Houses yeah. got blown over. So. Prayers out to the people that uh, you know, that have lost their homes or you know, got hit by the uh storm. Thanks. But uh, yeah, man, uh, he great uh, great point by William. Yeah, man. I mean, William always on point. I want to need him to be careful driving though. Right. Yeah, looking, down yeah. looking up, looking down, yeah, looking up. I'm, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need my ten piece later on today, so he needs to be. <laughs> uh, See, Smith, you always thinking about food. God dang. Mm -hmm. Can we get the work done first and then we no, eat no, later? I'm don't say anything about chicken because that, uh, yeah. that man You know that man loves chicken. Now. Man. You know he loves chicken. Now. He already put that out. <laughs> oh, we know that. We know that. Right, hey, what's up, what it do, bro? Hey, man, what's up with you and all this chicken talk, man? You need to go ahead and get you some food. Hold on. If you, you got to change, you got to change the meat up every once in a while, dog. Get some oxtails in there. Get some neck bones. Get man. something else, dog. Damn. Hey, man. Hey. I'm just gonna start, dog. I know man. we dirty birds and everything, but damn, you so, damn sure be killing the chicken, bro. Like to eat, what? Oh, ain't nothing wrong with ain't nothing wrong with that. Everybody like oh. to eat too. Some some more than others, but oh yeah, but it's all good though, man. What's going on, fellas? That but man, man, tell me what you think about that press guy. Man, just slide, just sliding off, grabbing that paycheck from the JLB. You know how it go. But hey, we all we all out here trying to get it in. But speaking of that, now somebody spoke in here and said um, that you can't be um, that you can't be the head coach in the OC. That's false because there's a few coaches who've won championships doing it. I put mm -hmm. in the chat, Joe Gibbs was one. He did yeah. it with four different quarterbacks. Remember the right. year that Doug Williams won the Super Bowl, Jay Schrader was starting. Before he before he gave it over to Doug, so you got Joe Gibbs who's done it. Um, Don Shula reluctantly gave it over to Howard Schnellenberger, who 
eventually became the Miami Dolphins. I'm sorry, Miami Hurricanes first national yeah. um, championship yeah. winning coach. Yeah. And I mean, you have so many guys who have done it that were successful. However, yeah, well. they listened to their staff. They had guys that were able to criticize and critique what they were doing wrong, and they listened. The difference with Arthur Smith was Arthur Smith was as stubborn as a southern jackass plowing the field. Just being oh, real. Yeah. That's the best way to describe it, dog. And, Ky- uh, and look, hey, and y'all get stubborn. mad at me, and I'm going to say it. And that's Kyle Pitts stubborn. is a mule just like his ass because he's the same way. Here's the thing. You get tired and you get reluctant of the same thing. Kyle Pitts quit on him a long time ago. That's hey. why he wasn't running routes. Steve hey. Weiss called that out in the interview. Think about it. You get tired of running routes and doing what you do. I've already said I wasn't a big I wasn't a proprietor of the pitch pick or the B. John Robinson pick. However, we know those were Arthur Smith's picks, as Steve Weiss confirmed. But his name, they got the helmets and they got the helmet and the logo and his logo business over here. I want these guys to do well in this Raheem Morris system. And Raheem Morris is already doing something that has not been done before. He's holding people accountable off the rip. Yeah. And outside of holding folks accountable, you also have to look at the fact that he's brought in quarterback coaches, not just one. He's got four on the staff. And I guarantee you one's going to be used to break down film. The other's going to be used to help out with a throwing motion. The other's going to be used to process what's going on in games. And another's going to be used to break down offensive game plans to help the quarterbacks learn right. in that right. quarterback room. Yeah. So right. Raheem way. Morris learned from his time in Tampa and learned with his time with the Rams and being around the league around some genius, genius coaches. So mm-hmm. you have to, at this point, the only thing I'll question is bringing that special teams coach back. That's the only thing I'll question. Because the guy that we had as a special teams coach, you know, I don't think he, could, I don't think he could draft up a kick return even out of a phone book, bro. Just being honest. And it should be easier uh, this year, though, right? It, it should I mean, be. Yeah, it should yeah, it be should easier rule. this year. But here's the thing: he's yeah. got to have guys that are going to be able to produce. And, and he did turn down a job to come back. Yeah, because he are because he already knew he already knew Raheem. He had a mm-hmm. let's he just did. say it like this. We always talk about nepotism, and sometimes that plays into people's favors. In this situation, that nepotism played in his favor because Raheem likes him and they have a great rapport. But let's be real. You bring anybody else in here besides Raheem, his monkey ass get his walking papers too. Thanks. I, mean, Absolutely. I don't disagree I mean, with that. Let's think about it. You flip-flop kick returners this year after Avery Williams would. Now, Avery Williams was a spark plug. You yeah. saw you had something with D. Alford back there. It should have been no way Mike Hughes should have been running punts back this year. None. Nope. Nope. And when you, you saw that they paying them though. Yeah, I get it. But here's the thing. You got a guy in D. Alford who you can bring back this year who is very effective on punt returns and kick returns. So mm-hmm. truthfully, Ray Ray McLeod is another insurance policy that they brought in. Solid receiver. Very good at special teams and kick return and punt return. My right. thing is, I still keep D off of the round because he still was solid in that Jerry Gray defense. Yeah. Once Jerry Gray started getting his hands onto him and helping him build his confidence on the right. NFL level, right. so it's a lot of. And here's my thing: I got to I got to get Jimmy Lake to show me a little something. Everybody's all on board. I'm not. I'm sorry. Well, I, it's like I'm a I get form, that part. but I'm not. I get that part, but mm-hmm. the reason why it's going to work, you just said it. Jerry Gray. Jerry Gray. <laughs> Jerry Gray was here last year with his top 10 defense. So you bring that part of the coaching staff back. And don't forget, Raheem Morris is a defensive guy. So he's yeah. got his hands on this defense as well. well this but here's the guy. question for you, Smitty. Go ahead. Now, now you just said – now you just talked about Arthur Smith being an offensive court – I mean – a, a, he bumbled the offensive coordinator spot. We know that Raheem is going to have an influence on that defense or whatnot because he's the head coach. However, with you being the head coach, oops, sorry about that. I dropped the phone. But I'm right here. I dropped the phone on accident. But with you being a head coach, you have many other hats that you have to wear and you have so many things that you have to delegate and you have to eventually learn how to 
turn the keys over and trust the people that you hired nice. that's going to help you get into a position to win. The nice. question is, how much how much leeway does Jerry Gray and Jimmy Lake have? That's the question. Well, I think I think Jerry Gray is probably going to have the most leeway because he's the assistant yeah. head coach as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he's still, so still in that position. Mm -hmm. I think uh, also I think him being more familiar with the players than Jimmy Lake, I think that's going to help as well. Uh, yeah. So when you look at it, Jerry Gray, like I said, he's the key to this defense. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's why even it was so though Raheem is the head coach, back. even though he was the head right, even if he's going to have input. At the end of the day, Jerry Gray with that assistant uh, head coach tag, he's going to help Raheem Morris keep this defense in line. Mm -hmm. So that is a positive. And uh, right. But we have a question on the screen, man. Uh, will any of y'all draft the running back on day three? Y'all know me. I'm on the Braylon Allen train, 6'2", 244 speed mm -hmm. uh, wrecking ball. That's, that would be my pick on in the fourth round. I but, got uh, one what, for you. What Frank, yeah. I got one for you. I got Frank Gore. I got Frank Gore Jr. If you do it this year, but next year I would go after Eaton James, Edger and James's son out of Howard mm -hmm. University. Those yeah. are two of my running backs that I would look at. Yeah. I ain't drafting. Hey. Look. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. No, I was just about to say, I mean, if we draft one, we do. I don't necessarily think we have to draft a running back this year. No, we don't. Um, we don't necessarily have to. I feel like there's other needs we can like kind of double up on, possibly triple up on, you know what I'm saying, for depth purposes. Yeah. Um, I would definitely still like to maybe get one of those later round quarterbacks over a running back, me personally. Michael Pratt. Michael yeah, Pratt. Pratt, Travis. Pratt. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I take yeah. <laughs> You know, so. and Darius Ricketts. I'm standing yeah, on yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and by the way, um, that guy right there, um, he is different. Yep. He's different. And, <laughs> and the thing about it is he has good tape. He has really good yep. tape. I meant to uh, reach out to you, Ryan, because I recently just had watched a few things and read a few things on Homeboy. And, yeah, he could possibly be that deal, too. So let's it's options if, out there. I wouldn't if, mind if, if I'll put it this way. I'm going to give him a comparison for you. And a lot of guys – that might have been watching the league and they weren't, they were just Falcon fans, but I'm going to give you a quarterback that was very underrated during his career and his skill set reminds me of him. Picture, okay. picture a quarterback, picture a young guy with a Jeff Blake type of competitive fire and a competitive okay. and a great arm. But mm -hmm. the difference is the kid can, the kid can actually run. He can. And, and, and with his running style, too. because he's a big guy. Yeah, I, I would say he's powerful. Yeah, I would give you this picture. Picture somebody trying to tackle Dante Culpepper with with a go. Jeff Blake arm and accuracy. That's the best way to describe him, and he's got like the mindset it. of a Warren Moon. That's how I can describe him as a quarterback. If I got to put all those quarterbacks together, that's what you would get. Right, right. No, definitely. And the thing about if you do get a quarterback in this draft too, that is a later round. It's one of those things to where mm -hmm. you know he's not starting immediately. And you want to see if you can groom him into something. It's totally different from the Desmond Ritter situation. Yes. As he got thrown right into the fire and he didn't even have anybody to develop him. At least if you draft a quarterback now in later rounds, you could possibly see uh, a change because we have so many people to help develop him and he's not going to be starting immediately. We know he's going to be sitting. Mm -hmm. well, at least that's what we're hoping for. You know, as long as everybody stay healthy, everything going well, you know, but. That's what we're hoping for, and I feel like you could do that. It's, it's different situations, so it's not necessarily like getting a quarterback in the later rounds and expecting him to just automatically fail, but, you know what I'm saying, with some tutelage, it possibly yep. could work. That's that's what it's all about. Facts. Can I throw you all a curveball before I step out of here because I ain't going to take too much more of your time? Another oh, position. You may have a sinker, Ryan. I don't know. You may have a sinker. I got a curveball. No, I got no, a. Got I'm, a, a curve, ball. I'm gonna throw a curveball at you. You ain't gonna ball. be able to hit. But okay. here's a here's a position that needs to be addressed quietly, that no one's thinking about, and this is something that we actually need a little assistance with. Line I back. say looking. I say look on the undrafted free agency side for a punter, because the punter that we have is an effective long snapper. We talk, <laughs> we talk about the third. We talk about the third. The third um, part of the game, and I've always spoken on that. And I've always said special teams is huge. And now that they're bringing yeah. it back, it's going to be even it's going to be even bigger this year. Now that we have a kick return and you're talking about field position. 
So mm-hmm. my thing is, I feel like you should start looking at a punter at this point because the punter that we have right now, he's he's all right, but we can get a better punter for little to nothing right mm-hmm. now. And I feel like you can get them for pennies off the dollar. That's just me. I'm looking at, like you said, we're addressing all the little needs. Like no one's looking at the the small needs that we need that can affect possibly the defense that's coming out this year with field positioning. Not nobody's talking about that. No, they 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 always bring in a punter uh, as an undrafted free agent every year. Man, but Smitty. But look at how many – but look at who they brought in. They brought in a failed punter from Washington State who was not that good from the West Coast. You bring in a old – you bring in – you bring in the cat from Tampa Bay who's old and wrinkled. Clemson punter. I don't even want to – I don't even want to call his name because he's such a disappointment. And, I mean, let's just be real, dog. We've kept people in ball games because field position has been bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Let me let me let me let me open up my let me open up the vernacular today. I'm actually going to show that I do have a little bit of education. I feel like the punting game and the special teams game has been atrocious. That's just my opinion, gentlemen. And I feel as if that they've got to matriculate this special teams unit into helping out this top flight defense so they're not on the field as long and they got a longer field to defend. Yeah, I've been saying uh, field position is going to be key this year. Um, yep. To putting up points because um, when you bring in a Kirk Cousin, you give him a shorter field with the weapon that he has, uh, that can make the Falcons a very dangerous team. And with the kickoff rule, like somebody said earlier, uh, to be honest, if the kickoff is going to go like that, I'm going to think about putting Bijan back there because we know hey, he, he, he hits the whole one hit, he gone. He go. Now, he, he's on, he I only be a big ball. That, that, that would gone. be something smart to do. Bring Bijan yeah. back there, but I'm gonna slide out of here, man. Um, y'all check us out tomorrow on the Birdcage LLC, 8 p.m. Okay. on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. And it's over a hundred people in this damn YouTube right now. Y'all need to go ahead and get these likes up because these boys here, Smitty Sports Machine, Birdo, my man Chris from A1, man, they give A1 from day one. Y'all boys give it to these people every single episode. Y'all need to start showing love, man. It don't, it's free. It's free to hit the like button. And y'all also hit up my man Larry Dixon on his podcast because he gives some of the greatest, not the best, the greatest commentary for Atlanta sports. Also, yeah, for the most sorry, um, the most sorry Florida Gators, too. You can tell the missus I said that. But anywho, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate, you know, y'all giving me some time. But check He's us out. Hey, <laughs> hey, Smitty, if y'all not doing nothing, man, we don't have no guests coming through tomorrow. So y'all drop through, and I'll send y'all the link tomorrow so y'all can come into the chat and chop it up with us tomorrow, man. Hey, just, just tell hey. K-Dub and Greybeard they better be ready for me, man. That's all. That's got, all. Man. That's all. Hey, man, you listen. Ain't you coach coming can. into my house like I'm coming into yours. You already know we got chicken, roast beef, ribs. Beef ribs for those who don't oh, eat pork, yeah, but yeah, not yeah. Kool Aid and everything for y'all folks. You said, you said the key word, the first word, chicken. Said, yeah, as yeah, soon as you said chicken, he was so <laughs> You didn't have to say hey. nothing else. <laughs> and we got the right and 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 we got chicken. Food. I'm on the way. We, all right, we got the peach cobbler on the side too for y'all boys who oh, love little way, fresh man. peach cobbler and sweet potato pie. We got that man. So y'all hey, check us out. The burnt cage of eight p.m. It's your boy, the historian, better known as Ryan Walker, signing out. Much love, fellas. Yes, sir. We're going to roll through. Hey, man, I, did he say something about some hot sauce? I didn't hear hot sauce. Yeah, no. you heard hot you sauce. bring your own yeah. hot sauce. Yeah, man, I ain't got it, man. I'm not bringing my hot sauce. You, you supposed but, to uh, have your own hot sauce. So they supposed to have that, boy, <laughs> have that in the coat pocket, dog. Like, like you like chicken so much. You supposed to have some hot yeah, sauce on you at all times. You slipping. That's your fault. Don't be mad. Yeah. Oh, what God. we just talking about in this match? You man, ain't got no hot sauce, bro. You supposed what? to have everything in order, Smitty. You supposed to have your own hot sauce, man. What? You supposed to have everything in order. We're going to give you everything. You got to bring the action, Smitty. You got to perform. It's exactly. on you. That's on you. <laughs> but my boy, M-Dub, got a question for y'all, man. What's the play at Strong Safety? Thank Do you. Do you have free agency or Rich's last chance? That's why I was gonna mention, man. Um, please, please. Yeah. That's why I was gonna mention. I'm not talking about no quarterback, guys. There's only one other position that I would even think about offensively. That's offensive line. 
other than that, defense, defense, defense. We're unsure if Terry's going to be able to work his magic in free agency. He, like You can say, oh, he can restructure this, we can restructure that. The players have to agree to their yeah. contracts getting restructured. So mm-hmm. right now, at this time, we got to base on the premise that we don't know how many contracts he's going to be able to restructure, but we can go sure. out in free agency and, and make some more plays to fill positions. We need safety. Yeah, I can't do it, Rich. No, I can't. I can't. We got, we got to do something. Like third round safety, uh, if you convince me second round, but I need pass rush, I need a safety, and I need another corner. Those are my three key spots. And if I want to get greedy, then I'm talking about possibly getting um, Jake Matthews replacement, aka, or he can slide over in uh, in a McGarry spot until Jake retires, and then do that. But yeah, I'm not thinking about a, a quarterback that's gonna sit on the bench. We don't know if we're gonna have enough money to actually go out in free agency and get some more pieces. I gotta make this like I've been saying, man. We got eight dry picks. We gotta hit on at least four. We have to. Right. So I say five. I say five. I, I, I'm being generous. I, I would yeah, love man. to have five starters out of this draft. Not even they don't have to be starters, just contributors. Like they just can key at roles least deals, two man. starters. I'm talking about like, like potential three like more key ready contributors. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like a rotational guys. Something right. like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying, guys. I'm not trying to be greedy. Man. Man, damn. Um Smitty, come on, five yeah. people out of eight. Five yeah. people out of eight. Five out of eight. Ooh. This this that type of draft, though. I mean, at key positions. Uh, I'm just saying it's back. loaded. Talent. I don't see no wide receiver. You if you draft well. Yeah. Cornerback, wide receiver, safety. Uh line. pass rusher. Well, pass rusher first. Why would pass, pass rusher? Now, it's another thing. Since he said safety. In this draft, do you feel like it's less top safeties in this draft and more top? Corners or viable options in corners. So I feel like this is a corner. This is a this cornerback heavy draft. Corner and wide receiver. I head. feel like a cornerback. Yeah, and wide receiver Larry, head. that's exactly what it is. It's cornerback and wide receiver heavy. heavy. Mm-hmm. So we could possibly get a corner late, a quality corner later in the draft. So we should eyeball. That's why I was saying third round safety. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to go no further than third round. It's safety. You know what I'm saying? I'm. That's just how I feel. So I'm feeling pass rusher, corner, safety, or or you can switch it up and say safety then corner if you as want. Long to. As long as or if you need that hurt. big dude in the middle and get sweat, now you got an anchor. Now you got a real anchor. Yeah, I love sweat. So yeah, and then you get that anchor on the defensive line, man. You take a lot of pressure out that secondary, man. Exactly, exactly. So but uh, Mike, for us too, don't okay. sleep on guys later on like Marshawn Le- Leland. I yeah. like that True. too, man. True. Game record. You can possibly see him in the second or third round too. <clears throat> Mike the trucker, four for my dude, man. What's up? Hey, what's going on? What's going on, Mike? What's going on, for fellas? Yeah, just getting to it. But going yeah, back we see. Just, just to that press conference yesterday, going back to that press conference yesterday, and I said it before, like everybody has been saying today, some players are ready to run through that um run through that brick wall for on um, Coach Raw. And the fact that it comes full circle, it makes you wonder. Had we just kept him, we wouldn't have wasted three years on seven and ten, seven and ten. Because I'm pretty sure had we had a competent guy quarterback, had we kept Matt instead of trying our best with that Deshaun trade, I'm pretty sure had we had a veteran, Dez wouldn't be sitting behind Ky- Kyler right now. Who, as you think about it, with Kyler, K- Kyler didn't really learn behind no veteran. He just came in off of pure skills, and now seeing where we're going. Mm-hmm. Definitely can't wait to see what is going to be this coming year. Having competent quarterback plays, having mm-hmm. guys that's going to be held accountable, and let's just think about it. You fuck up on that sideline, it does, it's not going to surprise me that we're going to get footage of Coach Raw putting his foot in somebody's ass on that sideline during uh, TV time. Yeah. 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 Facts. Agreed, man. But most definitely, but definitely getting the, the right key pieces, whether it's be through the draft <clears> or Knowing that uh, 
through the draft, but UDFAs who are there going to be some um, undrafted rookies that's going to make this team good. Everybody's going to forget we still got to start out with 90 guys and then cut it down to 53 before the on season even starts once we come out of preseason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and to go back to the quarterback pretty, position yeah. and what you said uh, with Kyler Murray not having to learn behind nobody. The thing with the quarterback position, man, either you got it or you don't. Right, it's just yeah. that simple. Right. And when you don't have it, it shows. When you do have it, it shows. That's why Kyler Murray picked up. And we talk about a guy who's really, what, 5'9", barely. Um, you talk about a guy that small, man, coming in, slinging the ball all over the field with confidence. And confidence is the key of a quarterback. And I didn't see any confidence uh, from Ritter. I've seen a little bit of confidence with Taylor Heineke. But it goes back to them not learning in the film room. So, right. I mean, and I think that's another thing that coach. I think ahead. that's another thing that Coach Rod gonna do that Arthur Smith failed to do last season. That's actually letting your starters play in the preseason, so you know what you got before mm-hmm. you just go and start them and throwing them out there during the season when they need to get playing time during preseason. So we know what we got and what we need to go back and work on before that first right. game. Yep, agree, agree. And uh, yep, one agree. thing that I haven't heard anybody say, and I've been kicking this. Uh, for about four or five months. One thing I love about Raheem Morris, he's pretty particular on structure. And I told y'all that we had to have structure in the front office. That's why Rich McKay is gone. Um, you have to have structure on the coaching staff, structure in the film room, and just structure in your entire organization. So that yeah. press conference let me know that the structure that he's putting together, he's going to try to work it piece by piece until this team becomes whole and becomes a contender. And I think that could be this year, to be honest. Absolutely. Yeah, even, his intro, like, even, his introductory, yeah. even his introductory press conference, look, you see how he took control of, of it when, when the media yeah. was trying to get something started? Like, uh, nah, he's stopping y'all dead in y'all tracks. He's like, this my team. This my press conference. Y'all shut the hell up and listen. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead now. <laughs> and please, and, some, and can we please pray, 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 and hope that Eddie go go make a stay, pay, not retire damn again? Because I hate we keep bringing back a guy who has even touched the damn field. Yeah, but I, I bro, I hate, I hate I hate that myself. Zero faith in Eddie Goldman. I I I, I, I have gonna, that it same. Gonna make me, it gonna make me wanna. It gonna make me wanna hop out the stand and go shake his ass. Like, dude, do something. <laughs> For real, I'm just I'm just saying, like, the only reason why I say that, I mean, we joke and we play, but seriously, I really hope that he has all his issues worked out just because it's already happened twice. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the only thing. The first time it happened, I'm trying to tell you, I, you know, we all, I believe, you know, since was on the train of, OK, Eddie, man, do what you got to do. We understand. It's cool. Then you come back again. We like, all right, welcome back. Next thing you know, you you, you drop out on us again. We like, OK, Eddie. All right. All right. And now you're back again. So it's like, what's up, bro? You know, it's just, it's just like, what you, you, know, what it's you really just, got going on? If your name yeah, ain't Guerrero or Kane, I don't want you here. Facts. Yeah, man. So I really, and then at the same time, we got to think about this too. It's a different regime. So he probably had to go through different right. channels to even be able to come back. Oh, oh yeah. He had taught Arthur this time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, he had taught yeah. Arthur this time. So, so I really hope that he comes back and he's ready to perform and, but, and give us his best effort on the field. But like yeah. I told you, Chris, is a need, man. 6'3", 335 pounds. Definitely uh, need it. Need. Oh, we definitely need it because we, we we tight. We, we tight in certain areas, man. Because we they, need they, they, guys in that defensive yeah. line who's going to not only manhandle you, but going to throw you around and take your lunch money. That's what I want to see. Yeah. Huh? It, it happened a little bit up under Arthur Smith, but uh, um, it just didn't come <laughs> all the way around because, like I said, when you talk about a guy that has no sense of urgency, uh, it rubs off on the players, but uh, yeah, yeah, man. Thank, thank yeah, God yeah. for that over. Thank God for that overnight shipping out of town. That helped. Facts. Oh yeah. You know but uh, hey, man, it's been a great show, man. We've been on hour, almost an hour and a half, and uh, I always love talking football, man. The draft is coming up, man. Three weeks from Thursday. Oh, three weeks woo, from tomorrow. It's gonna be so, a fun. Uh, so yeah, y'all better be ready, man, because uh, we gonna have that draft special. Uh, coming through, I think we're gonna be on one time for the fan. Um, I might drop into everybody's live. Uh, but yeah, before we get out of here, man, uh, jump around. Facts. 
Before we get out of here, man, any final thoughts before we get out of here? Shoot, man. Any final final thoughts is, again, captivating speech by our coach Raheem Morris. Yeah. Really just hoping that it translates to the field. That's all I needed to do at this point. We uh we have all the tools. We have the thing as far as uh motivation goes. Just mm -hmm. have a great giraffe. Put this team together. Put the best uh fifty three that you can together, and let's go win, man. Let's go for let's go freaking win. Larry, uh, how the late great Chris Farley you say? It's go time. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, yeah. go time, man. Yeah, that yes, Beverly uh, Ninja, that's one of my favorite movies, man. It is, yeah. man. Um, yeah, hopefully, Coach Raheem, we love to talk. We want to see the walk now. Yeah, but hopefully that hopefully the players will buy in and don't just take it as coach speak. Um, I got a good feeling about Coach Raheem. Mm -hmm. Um, Terry, you gotta cook, you gotta hey man. See, Smitty is holding you to you gotta get five. Five of those picks. Hey, I'm there too. And the reason why I say five, don't right. get me wrong. No, 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 no. That's fine. That's, yeah. But I'm talking about as far as rotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. them to be effective, and like you said, offensive line has to be a uh, great rotation after right. Bergeron, Lindstrom, uh, Matthews. What else do you have? Storm yeah. Norton comes back, but he's not a solidified starter, even though he took over Caleb McGarry late in the season. Uh, oh, so. Good. You may have to go and look at another offensive tackle, uh, yeah. whether it's in the draft or undrafted free agency, um, to fill that spot. So, um, and I want, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I've even mm -hmm. said Joe Alt moving to that left tackle spot or that right tackle spot until Jake Matthews leave, that would be an ideal move. It's because, not uh, it's harder. yeah, mm -hmm. because a guy, a guy that size and that type of skill set just don't come along that often. Uh, mm -hmm. You're talking about a 10 to 15 year guy at left tackle. So yeah. um, that would be something that I would definitely, definitely look at. Uh, but Trucker Mike, Jaden, man, thank y'all for coming through. Uh, yes, Chris sir. and Larry, um, please tell everybody where to find y'all, man. All right. Um, you guys can find me and the beautiful Shonda on the Dixon Way on YouTube, TikTok, Twitch, Rumble, and Twitter or X, whichever way you want to call it. Uh, and yeah, guys, what we do, we do live commentary throughout, you know, sporting events. So that's the Braves, the Hawks, the Falcons, the Bulldogs, even my white Gators. That's why you see the uh, house divided little plaque up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we do, man. If you want to basically, you don't want to listen to the regular commentators, turn down your TV, turn up the Dixon way. And uh, let's sit back, chop it up. And we talk to the um, people in the chat and stuff like that. We try to have a good time, man. Give you another source outlet to um, how you watch the game and how you, you know, Fair. basically have the game going. So, man, thank you for having me on here, guys. You guys are awesome, awesome. Um, hey, when you next telecast, man? Uh, actually, it was supposed to be right now, but it's rain delayed. So we uh, got the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it was snowing. I'm, I got it up right here. It looked like it's sleep. So it's like um, thirty-seven degrees. With a wind chill of like twenty nine right now. It's still in Chicago. Sheesh. Yeah, um, it's the White Sox. Yeah, it's snowing oh, yeah. in oh, April. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's so cold yeah, uh, it was raining slash sleeting before they showed it, and they said it's postponed till three thirty. So guys, if you want to go check out the Braves content? Come on over to the Dixon Way, man. Pull up a chair and make sure y'all smash that like button over here mm -hmm. on A one. Thank on you. Birdo's channel, and then come on over to the Dixon Way, smash it too. Come Thanks. on, become a part of the Dixon Way family. Come on, Shawty. Yes. Come on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Hey, same for me, man. Make sure you know you're coming through. Have a conversation with me on A1 Forever Sports. You know, the show that's cool and fly too, but we be generational because it's always time to be, and we don't settle for less because we always can have more with the vision. And also, honestly, man, I, I great. I appreciate always being a part of the panel. Appreciate always being a part of, um, you know, collaborating with great people like the guys that are up here and having the chat. Man, it's always great. It's always fun, man. And this is this is always good work right here, man. You can find me on Twitter, A One Rock. You can also find me. Uh, what is this? Uh, what, what is it called? Oh yeah, TikTok. 
so many apps and so many different uh platforms twick TikTok, the real a1 forever instagram a1 forever as well and man just come by and have a conversation man that's what it's all about let's it's football time man almost time for football and we also do braves we also do um atlanta hawks content as well you're going to see more of that as you know saying it's a time and it's a summer coming along also getting ready to gear up for graduation uh been a long four years and i am ready to get that over with <laughs> so, <Max. laughs> so, yeah. um i gotta say a shout out to Jaden too man Jaden been following me hard for like the last year and a half so yep. uh thank you for finally coming through my brother and no uh I didn't mean to make you hungry last night. That was my bad. Man, uh, I'm hard to break out. <laughs> Same here. I ain't going to lie. Same here. Oh, man. But, uh, Trucker Mike, man, thank you too, man, for coming through, man. I truly appreciate you. Uh, both of y'all for supporting the channel, man. And everybody in the chat, man, thank y'all for coming through, man, because uh, without y'all, wouldn't be no uh, sports machine, A1 Forever right. or Dixon Way. Uh, right. So thank y'all for always supporting us. Dave. Uh, Playboy Darian, man, y'all can check him out on YouTube as well. Uh, Dirty Bird Diner, uh, please go check him out. Archangel, my dude, man, thank you for coming through. Art. Uh, but man, this has been a great conversation. If y'all just catching it, please go check out uh, the first part of the video where we look at uh, the press conference, the meeting from yesterday, break it down, analyze it, and give our thoughts, man. And don't forget uh, to press that like, subscribe button, and before we get out of here, also, man, I want to give a shout out to, uh, uh, well, not a shout out, but uh, condolences to the family of Vontae Davis, uh, who passed yes. away the other day, man. Surprisingly, at only 35 years old. Uh, as I tell y'all, man, uh, love on your love on why they're here, because we don't know what tomorrow may bring, even if tomorrow don't even come for some of us. So, uh, y'all, please let go of the grudges, let go of the uh, hate. And uh, learn to love on one another, man, because like I said, man, tomorrow is not promised. So, so right. my boy, 8 1 Forever, the Dixon Way, my boy, Jaden, uh, Trucker Mike, man, we're going to roll on up out of here, man, uh, on the sports machine. And uh, let me see, can I find this dope uh, exit video while I do that? Holla at y'all later, man. Peace. Peace.